Uh, good afternoon, uh, my friends. Uh, again, I'm Rev. Samuel Owino Wangwa. Today, before I come here, because I want us to continue with our subject that we had started, that uh, I was to continue with daily during this week, but because of some circumstances, it was not possible for me to come online. But before I come here today, we want to go to one of the media houses in Kenya so that we can take our plea to them so that it can be aired. But one thing I came to realize and to learn was that when you go there, there are a lot of, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, messages that was to be aired, but they are governed by the media houses management. For example, and I want to read to you, I want to read to you what we were supposed to take to the media, one of the media houses in uh, Kenya today. Because many of our members, they are saying that pastors are not talking. But today I came to learn that we are talking, but our, whatever our lamentations are not aired. They are not being aired. And so I want to read this letter to you that was written by us, that we were supposed to represent to one of the media houses, but unfortunately they agreed that we air one. So maybe today evening or tomorrow, uh, tune, KT, uh, tune on channel uh, Citizen Kenya, and you will see us. But uh, a lot of things that we were supposed to present to the media house were not allowed. And here I read the letter that we are supposed to present to the media houses. Press statement by pastors and imams in Watamu Ward, Kilifi County. Yes. Um, as religious leaders, we take note of the situations of COVID-19 that has now affected over 2 million, 2.5 million above over people in the world claiming over 1.8, uh, 184,000 lives. We are alive to fact that as a country, we have registered 303 cases re resulting on 14 deaths. That's, that was on the 23rd of April 2020 at around uh, 10, uh, 10 uh, p.m. And uh, we wish to remind the citizens of this great nation, Kenya, to follow government advice of wearing face mask while in public, i.e. while in markets, while in, uh, while in in, while in markets, while traveling in multitudes and motorbikes, we note this concern that even as of now in Watamu and her environs, the Mangues, this is the Mnazi local clubs uh, or dens, are still operate in operation, not observing social distance and even sharing drinking brews, drinking stores. Also, we also know that banks, border border riders, and matadus are operational, are in operational while observing the laid down health measures set out by the Ministry of Health. Now, we wish to implore the president of, uh, uh, we wish to implore to the president to allow the churches and mosques to operate as we follow the laid protocols by the Ministry of Health. We invite mass testing in churches and mosques. Um, we ask the government to include houses of worship as essential services we declare our commitment to help uh, to help with precautions of maintaining safe social distances, wearing of masks, uh, hand washing with soap, as well as use of hand sanitizers. We also commit to purchase thermal guns to uh, to pick out the faithful uh, from uh, from our midst and advise them accordingly. That was what we were supposed to be to, to, to put in to, to be aired by one of the media houses. Unfortunately, they refused and only allowed us that what they are going to, to put to air was this one, to, uh, that we invite mass testing in churches and mosques. And also we ask our governments to include houses of worship as essential services. We invite mass testing in churches and in mosques. We ask the government to include houses of worship as essential services. We were supposed to air that because many people have seen in online, they have been saying that pastors and bishops, they have kept quiet. But I came to learn, I want to clear the air now, is that we are trying our level best to voice out, but no one is airing whatever we are trying to air out. So they are being maintaining the media houses, 
and being kept there. They refuse to air because maybe through the government, if they do that, they might be taken uh, lessons from them. So, my viewer, my brother, my sister, my church member, I want you to understand. I want you to understand that up to now, we are not quiet. We are trying. But, but whatever we are telling to the media, they choose what to air and what not to air, what to cancel and what to, 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 to put there. Now, we remain only to hands. Please, we need to pray on this. We need to pray on this because the government, maybe they have taken their stance according to the World Health Organization. We are making noises and we will continue making noises, by the way. We are not going to keep, we are going to still continue making noises. If possible, if we'll get a chance and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll air even, even your views. But as for now, we've tried. I want to, to tell you, I want to make you understand that as pastors, as bishops, we've tried, we've gone, we've, we, we've gone, we've, we've tried. But we were told that the media house, uh, media houses management, some of the views, like this one that uh, we asked the government, remember here I say that we implore the, to the president to allow the churches and mosques to operate as we follow the laid protocols by the Ministry of Health. But they say this one will not go through. They will go to the media houses, the management, but there they will not allow uh, that thing to <laughs> to be aired. Thank you, uh, Pastor Rasto Shengesi. Today we are trying to reach media houses. And uh, yes, we reached one. Maybe tomorrow you might see in the media, uh, one of the media houses in Kenya, but they refused this one. And they allowed us only to air this one, that we invite masters in churches and mosques. And also we, they allowed us only to air, they will only air this part that we ask government to, to include houses of worship as essential services. These were our prayers to the government. But unfortunately they are saying that mo most of them they were not going to be air. That made us to learn that many of the pastors and bishops, they are trying to voice out, but their voices are not aired. Yes, and also there is one. We say that we declare our commitment to the health precautions of maintaining uh, social distancing, wearing of masks, uh, for face masks, handing, um, uh, okay, hand washing with soap as well as use of hand sanitizers. Um, we also commit to purchase thermal guns to pick out the faithful from our midst as we advise them accordingly. That was what we were supposed to put to the air. Welcome, Christ the Resurrection. We tried, and we are not quiet because people. Are, I've seen people talking in Facebook in May, but among I am among ministry founders, so it is my concern because I have churches, and so I. We, that is where we. Can, uh, I want to let us know that we've tried really, but even media houses, uh, according to the, uh, according to how the gauge, the measurements that have, they have been given, they cannot air some of our views. So please just bear with us and we need to voice our voices to heaven because Jesus really and God answers and he hears our prayers. Okay, that was just a brief as we want to go on with our learning of today. Welcome and uh, okay, it was to brief you that we are not just sitting as pastors. We are not just sitting as pastors. We are praying as well as trying to, to voice out we are trying even to make noise and to do many, many things. And we are not getting, uh, we, are, we, are not, we are not going to get to, to, to be quiet. We will continue voicing out uh, if God will touch our president to see what they can do to churches. We cannot just sit that way. The churches, they have made the, the, the prayer houses and churches cannot be closed. It is not good. It is for surely, it is not, it is not good. Because this is as if we are locking God out of our problems. It is as if we are locking God out of our problems. So this one we need to include God. And the place that we can use, what do we pray? You know, you know, people say that we can pray in the houses. I agree with us. We can pray in the houses. But according to the book of uh, Matthew chapter number 18, verses 18, the Bible says that when two or three are gathered together, when two or three are gathered together in the Lord's name, two or three, and when they agree, so this is the prayer of agreement in the book of Matthew 18, 18 to 19. This is known as an agreement prayer. Okay, today, that was just uh, shortly, uh, shortly, but we were to talk about the, 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 the ministerial offices or the ministerial gifts. The ministerial, the ministerial gifts. And I want to do recap. I want us to do recap 
so that we con- con- can continue. Now, uh, Harrison Barikiwa, wow, bless us. Thank you. Continue pray for us because even we are worried. After reaching there, we are told that uh, pastors, these things that you are trying to inquire, we, we, we as media houses, we are not going to be allowed to air that. So that is where how far we've gone. Thank you for that. We say, uh, wow, blessed, may more grace, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Continue lifting us before the Lord and we pray for each other. I, as we pray for the church members, the church members also should put us into prayers as well. And now, let us come back to our uh, the ministerial gifts ministerial gifts okay and i said i want to go into brief just briefly uh, this this ministerial gifts are found in the book of um, Ephesians chapter chapter 4 verses 11 to 15 right, to 16 there are five ministerial gifts in operational in church that is men named apostles prophets uh, evangelists teachers um, Okay, and, and pastors. Also, they are known as fivefold ministries. And I said that we don't say that apostle is the greatest one. No. There is none that is great. We cannot say that among these four, five fingers, there is one that is greater than other. No. Both of them are equal. It's the mighty hand of God, which is having oh, five fingers. And in briefly, I say that the reason why these were given, they were given because of the church to do what? The purpose uh, was that... Um, that, that the church may grow, the church may be equipped, and uh, uh, and what? And uh, that, um, okay, let me go quickly. The work of the ministry, that the, the for uh, the equipping and uh, what? To equip the church, that which means to furnish completely for the use. And uh, now, it is also a divine call. It is that a divine call is not a personal choice. You cannot choose to be called apostle. You cannot call yourself an apostle and you force people to call you an apostle. You cannot choose to become a pastor and try forcing people to be called a pastor. You cannot force yourself to be evangelist and try forcing people to call you an evangelist. I said a gift is something that is given and it is given according to how the spirit wills. So it is for us to understand, to recognize our position where we were and it is also a calling so it is jesus who first called that is in, in fact he told them that you are not the one who called me i am the one who called you so we did not call jesus it is jesus who called us and now here we go here we go here we go uh we started with apostle, an apostle, an apostle, and I, and I said that the gift of the apostle is one of the most, the first, the first mentioned, most widely used in the New Testament. I say it was the first mentioned. I am not saying that it's the greatest one. No, it was the first mentioned in the New Testament. We say that an apostle is an ambassador, uh, is a delegate, is a messenger. Is that someone that is sent? I say that Jesus one day prayed for, uh, um, uh, spoke to the blind man, and he told him to go to the Siloam. Siloam, which means sent. So apostle just means someone that is that is that is sent. The apostle is a foundational gift. It is their foundational gift, and Jesus is our first apostle. Jesus is the apostle according to the book of hebrews chapter 3 verses 1 some of the verses you're going to read at yourself because i'm not going to read them i'm not going to read them because of the scarcity the, the shortage of time now jesus was sent forth and he did not just come to the earth he was sent forth and he was sent with a mission so and also jesus came and he sent the disciples so disciples became apostles the first disciples they were the one that became first apostles because they were the ones that were saints you see now in the book of matthew chapter 28 verses 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 18 he told them that the authority and the power has been given to me and now i sent you go ye even if he did not say that i'm sending you but he said now go ye what we call the great commission they were sent out now we see that jesus is the first apostle above all and we also have we will we also have the apostle paul according to corinthians chapter first corinthians chapter number nine verses one to two you are going to read at your own at your own time also you're going to read first corinthians chapter four to five that uh, was in brief about the apostle and i said that we have some marks of apostolic gifts so some people have been calling themselves apostles yet they are not so 
Bear, sit with me now. I want you to understand where you are. Today you will know if you are an apostle or you are just calling yourself an apostle. And now these are the marks of apostle. These are the apostolic mark. The, the marks of the apostolic gift. Number one, an apostle is an initiator. Number two, I'll not, I'll not go to detail because this is a recap. Today I'm going much to talk about an evangelist. Today I'm going to talk on evangelist. But I'm just doing a recap that you know where we come from, where, whereby when we reach at the evangelist, you've, you'll have known where we've come from. So an apostle is an initiator. He is also a visionary. An apostle is a visionary. And number three is, a, is, having, is someone having a strong mission. That is an apostle. Number four, an apostle establishes churches and also don't think that when you open a church now you become an apostle no it is just one of the marks just one of the marks he establishes churches and also they care deeply of the church apostles they care number five they care deeply about the church they care deeply of the church and number six they are highly invested in the church apostles are highly invested in the church and number seven they pastor pastors Apostles, they pastor pastors because after opening a church, they preach, they teach members, and later on, they will choose some to be pastors in those churches, and now they become their pastors. So, an apostle pastors pastors is a pastor to pastors. Okay, and now, and also, and uh, number eight, apostles preach and teach the word they don't come by their own minds because now we have some apostles that comes by their own words and their own eloquences and now they try to call themselves apostles because they have some terminologies theological terminologies they think that by now using uh, theological terminologies now that can make them become an apostle but no 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 because sometimes when you come with a the theory with some big big languages some big grammar People will not understand you and you will have failed in the apostolic office. So the apostle, they preach and teach the words. Apostle, they preach and teach the word. Not words, but the word of God. This word is the one in the book of John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So the apostles, they preach and teach the word. Now, let's do, let us uh, do recap on the word, on prophet. Today, I'll talk much about evangelist, but I am just want us to know, those who have not been with us for those days, when I was talking about this, I just want you to know, I welcome Jacob Maundu, welcome Doreen Kenya. We are talking about fivefold ministries. Yes, and now, today, uh, let me do recap on the prophet. Prophet. The office of the prophet is found in both Old and New Testament. Mark you that. And I say that I'll not go deep on this because last time I went into details on the quick uh, ministry. But today I'm just doing a recap because I'm heading to the man known as Evangelist, this long man. Yes, now, um, the, pro- the office of the prophet is found in both Old and New Testament. And also... Uh, we have what? We have uh, distinguishing between prophecy and the prophet. We have the difference. The fact that you are prophesied <laughs> does not make you a prophet. There is this problem that when someone have a dream and the dream come to pass, now they call themselves prophets. Now, just that you are prophesied does not make you a prophet. <laughs> Again, and I'm saying, I say that we must distinguish between prophecy and the prophet you can prophesy even sometimes because the word of god can come to you even if you are not a prophet so sometimes if god remember someday god used a donkey when balaam was going to meet balak at that donkey the eyes were opened and he saw that the 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 the, 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 the great angel with a sword in his hands the archangel and he told balaam why are you beating me and are you not seeing this man in front of you now it doesn't mean that that donkey was a prophet now but he prophesied because uh, a prophet a prophet is someone that foretells and foretells there is a difference between foretelling and foretelling now foretelling sometimes uh, we have one that is telling something before it happens and someone telling th- things that happened before he or she was born so we have in prophecy we have foretelling and 
foretelling. We have foretelling, foreteller, and foreteller. One tells things prior to happen, and one tells things that had happened before we were born. Now, here are the marks. Marks of the prophetic ministry. Now, you, I, I think I'm talking about not or you are true uh, apostle and now these are the marks now look at yourself maybe you've been calling yourself a prophet now here is the what where is here is the test here are the marks of the prophetic ministry and number one they speak they speak divine revelation as revealed by the spirit and last week i told you that a certain man came to me and he was trying to tell me things and because he was not a believer and his wife was my church member now this man was trying to tell me things that later i called my wife i i called the wife of that man to tell her that god has showed me such and such a thing now if i could have gotten to that test yes the wife could have believed that the man of god has been shown but truly speaking it was not man it was not god it was that man who told me about his wife so sometimes we need to be careful now a prophet speaks divine revelation as revealed by the spirit and number two a prophet may have visions dreams and revelations and remember i told you that not all dreams are prophecy <laughs> because dream comes into three categories <laughs> the dream will come. <laughs> Number two, when you are meditating about something too much, the dream also will come. And number three is this one that of the revelation of God. Now, this one, when it, it comes to you three times, the same, same vision. Now, when you are still in test of uh, testing the spirit, because the spirit must be tested and judged, I'll tell you afterwards. Now, if it comes to you three times, now you'll think about this. This, this one is not a, a normal dream. But just the fact that you have dreamt and you have, you have a dream, it doesn't mean it's a prophecy. So, a prophet may have visions, like, like the day of Peter. He saw it. That is, and one day I'll talk about the visions, because we have an open vision. We have trance and many types of visions. But today, I'm talking about prophet and prophecy. This uh, prophet also, they have dreams, and also what we have, they have what we call a revelation. Also, prophet may foretell of the future. I told you they foretell or foretell. Foretelling means that this man he speaks some or a woman they speak things that happened many years before they were born. You see, for example, the born the birth of Jesus it was prophesied by Prophet Isaiah 500 years before before, and there were prophets that used to remind people about them what had been. Uh, prophesy so that they were foretelling and our foretelling is like isaiah 500 years back speaking prophesy prophesy on things that will happen 500 years to come so we have the, the prophets they do what they may foretell of the future and also um we have what we call personal prophecy this one reveals to us what we are because they can prophesy to one to one another but not all the time i have i have heard people saying that now man of god prophesy to me no you don't tell man of god to prophesy to you and finally a prophet may have signs and wonders follow their ministry and last week remember i told you that even though we've not re reached there i told that prophet they can work with the uh, they can work together with an evangelist because they are accompanied with signs, wonders, and miracles. So, prophet can have. Today, we are going to talk about evangelism. So, I don't want to go ahead of my subject because I'll, uh, we are going to talk later on now or not on, on evangelist. But now we are tackling a prophet. So, I said a prophet sometimes may have signs and wonders follow their ministry. So, who are you? <laughs> this subject is meant this marks and be i'm giving to you that maybe you have you are a prophet or maybe you've been a pro, uh, an apostle but you have not been understanding who you are so and also in other words in other hands you may be prophesying you may you may be uh, calling yourself a prophet yet you are not you may be a uh, welcome joshua carissa you may be calling yourself an apostle just to be respected yet you are not i've given you the mark of a prophet and have given the marks of an apostle okay now here are the pitfalls i'm talking on the pitfalls oh, you know when you uh, if i talk about the pitfall maybe you may not understand what pitfall is pitfall is that when you are driving on a you when, on, on a road tarmac road we have those, those sides of the road that have holes 
So in the road, there are some holes. Those are, those are what we call pit holes. Now, what we call what? We call, we call them, we call them, we call them, we call them, we call them um, pitfalls. Pitfalls. The holes, the weaknesses. I don't know how to put it much, but I think you understand. When you're driving, riding, or even walking on the road, the tarmac road, and you find there are holes in there. So there are holes in the prophetic. So here are the pitfalls of the prophetic ministry. Number one, a prophet's ministry should be judged. Should, should be judged. Some of them, they don't want to be judged. We need to judge. And when they are judged, Jeremiah was told that if anyone will prophesy, and the prophecy will not is not aligning with the word of God and it does not come to pass, that is not a true prophet. He or she is a false prophet. So the prophecy must be judged. The prophet's ministry should be judged. Number two, they are running at the risk of too much liberty. They don't want to be contained. They don't want to be governed. They don't want to sit under people. They don't want to sit under leadership. They are running the risk of too much liberty. They want to be free. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now talking about the pitfalls of the prophetic ministry. If you are a prophet now, listen and listen careful now. And number three, they are what we call they are personal prophecy. Remember I say that running the risk of too much liberty is because of the nature of this ministry. The fact that they operate impartially by the spirit ministers in the prophetic ministry run risk of labeling everything that says the Lord. Everything that happens the Lord. And remember human being has got three spirits. We have God, Holy Spirit, we have human spirit, and we have evil spirit. So sometimes they say, thus say the Lord, while it is not the Lord saying, it is themselves, their conscience. <laughs> you see? Now we have people that prophesy, they just speak because speak, and they say, thus says the Lord. And they think that if they say so, so, they will be respected. Those are the pitfalls. The pitfalls. Okay, uh, and I say, and I say that um, it can be difficult to judge or hold the prophetic ministry accountable. It can be difficult, and they feel that as if they prefer, uh, they feel that if they prefer everything with the thus is the Lord, then they should have liberty to share it, even if it didn't come from God, because they have said thus the Lord. They say they want the church to hear them and to re respond to them. You see now. I said, and these individuals ran the risk of getting off the ministry. Why? They took too much, they take too much liberty. They don't want to be held accountable. <laughs> there was one who came and prophesied, <laughs> sorry to say this, but some of them, they, lack, they are because of ignorance. And, and if I say ignorance, I don't say that, uh, I say it is lack of knowledge. Someone that, for example, now I am ignorant in, uh, in uh, uh, doing what? What does the pilot do? What does the pilot do? Now I cannot do the work of the pilot, so I am ignorant in those area. So this this woman, I don't know where he he, he found this, but he, he said that the Lord has spoke to he to her that my child is going to die. You see, so so and she came and spoke in the church, and now everyone was furious of, of her because I have only one daughter. <laughs> my wife was the one that was my wife locked him, herself in the house and is refused to speak to anyone except me and also i forced her to open the door because he, she had this after staying 12 years with a child and now a prophet coming to say that the lord has, has spoken to her that my child my daughter was going to die i must appreciate my 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 my, my friend my mentor reverend kelly johnson he came and spoke to me told me that yes your daughter will die but not today even myself i'll die but not today so you see now all people, they told me to chase the woman in the church, from the church. But being that I know what I'm doing, and I've learned this subject well, I knew that this woman was just an ignorant woman, just, uh, just innocent. She thought that the Lord is speaking, but maybe she, she, had dreamed, she had dreamt or she just fell in her heart. So later on, she came and, and asked for forgiveness, you see. So they want to be, they want to be believed that whatever they speak <laughs> is a prophecy, whereby some of them are just their own conscience, their own will. Their own, whatever. I don't know how I can put it. But um, I say, but they don't want to, to, to be held accountable. They say that the Lord has spoken, for example. <laughs> uh, sorry for, for the followers of uh, uh, Reverend uh, T.B. Joshua. I, I heard uh, in the article that Holy Ghost deceived me. You see? 
Now some, okay, it is not, it's not bad. The Spirit spoke to him. But now some, just an example, I'm not against him. I respect that man of God, really. We need to have such men of God in, 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 in the midst of us. But they prophesied a lot about Corona. But later on they say that all oh, the Holy Ghost received. So they, well, they say that it is not me, it is the Holy Ghost, you see. But now, before you bring the welcome, Leonard Muvuti, before you bring to us the thus says the Lord, you need to sit yourself and understand that did you hear well? Was it God or was it just your own thought? Or was it a, just a normal dream? Or was it from evil land, <laughs> from the evil spirit? So, I say that sometimes these individuals want to override the leadership in the church. Those who are, they will call themselves, because I, I have given you the marks. And these who call themselves prophets, they are not. But they want to override uh, over the leadership of the church in the church, and they can be bold and abrasive. These people who call themselves prophets, they are very bold and abrasive. Now, let me look at the personal prophecy. Personal prophecy, which have also danger. This, this, this personal prophecy is prophesying one to another. We have some ministries where they come to church on Friday and they start prophesying for one to another. Now we have a danger. Many churches have created environments where people are free to prophesy to one another as they feel led. You see? Now, God doesn't give you a message for everyone who just appoints. God doesn't give you a message for everyone, just who he appoints. God himself, he gives the prophecy, not, not just come and say, by my man of God, speak to me. Prophesy now, I prophesy. No, 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 not a joke. No, no, you can't make it happen. It is as the Spirit wills. Prophecy comes as the Spirit wills, the Spirit himself. You want to say, man of God, prophesy. now let me prophesy. It is not a joke like that. And also, these people are susceptible to being misled by the enemy. They go by their own will, their own concern, their mind. Because they want to be loved by people, they will prophesy what they want people to hear. You see? You know, even though prophecy encourages, but also prophecy warns and directs. Also now, these times uh, of activity must only operate under the submission of the head of the church. This time of activity must only, only, we must only operate under the submission of the head of the church. Who is Jesus number one and the leadership of the church? Not just to be free because you are now an, because you are now a prophet, you start forcing the church to follow you. Now, people must operate in the prophetic outside of the leadership of the church are in Korea. People that operate, people that operate in the prophetic outside of the leadership of the church are incorrect and their hearts are wrong. Now, if they cannot sub- submit to the leadership of the church, then they are not operating in a gift, they are operating in the flesh. Welcome, uh, Jen Elijah. I'm saying if they cannot submit to the leadership of the church, then they are not operating in the gift, they are operating in their own flesh. I told you, those are the what? The pitfalls, the pitfalls in prophets in prophecy. And this one must be mended. And you need to know where, in fact, if you know your role, if you know where you are, if you know. The gift that is operating inside of you, you will go far. And also, if you are a minister, like now I am a pastor and I am an evangelist. I cannot build my ministry in science, wonders, and miracles. No. The ministry must be built in the word of God. If I, can, uh, if, if I just dare to build in the science, wonders, and miracles, when the miracles dries, dries up, I'll try forcing things to happen. And these are the preachers whereby the anointing had gone far many days past, but they are trying to force that people they will see signs, wonders, and miracles. Now, it is, unscriptural, it, it is unscriptural to seek guidance through the minister of prophet. Now, and I read to you from the book of Hebrew, chapter 1, verses 1, that the Lord who spoke through the prophets, now he has spoken, he has chosen to speak through his only begotten son, that is Jesus Christ. So I say it is unscriptural. It is against scripture to seek guidance through the ministry of prophets. We have them nowadays. They call them, they call themselves <laughs> the prayer warriors. You see? 
it is it is against the scripture nowadays to go to someone telling him that now prophesy man of god prophesy to me <laughs> that is against scripture nowadays in the book of hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 that the lord who spoke in ancient with the prophets nowadays has chosen to speak through to us through his son jesus christ by the word of god who is the word of god in the beginning john chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was god and the word was god you see now aha uh-huh. and i say that in the old testament in the old testament people had to go to the prophet they were cut off from the holy of holies in old testament we have a better in new testament now according to hebrews chapter 8 verse 6 we have a better covenant we have a new and better covenant having a better promise now we we now have the presence of god living in us the holy spirit can lead and direct us individually and this one you need to do it you need to have a trained conscience and how do we train our conscience? By reading the word of God, understanding the word of God. Because not everything that your conscience tells you, you ought to follow. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You, you, even when you're in the house, when you say hallelujah, just shout amen. <laughs> even in the house, when you say hallelujah, you shout what? Amen. Now, um, we now have the spirit of the Lord living in us. You know, David, uh, King David used to, say that, used to say that I lift up my eyes on the mountain to see where does my help come from. But nowadays, our help comes from within us. Within us. Even the problem that you have, you have the solution within you. Our help comes from within us because we have the presence of the Lord within us. Now, every believer needs to learn and learn to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Every believer, not only pastors, not only prayer warriors, not only evangelists, not only, but now every believer needs to learn to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit for themselves. And the ministry of prophets is not a replacement of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. And I repeat again, the ministry of the prophet is not a replacement for the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Because now some believers, they don't pray for themselves, they don't read the Bible, they don't listen, or they don't what welcome. They don't listen to, to inside of them, they depend on the prophets. Oh, I've come, I have come now. Prophesy to me during this problem, what am I to do? No, the ministry of the prophet is not a replacement of the Holy Spirit. We need, in fact, when we were saved, when we are when we receive Jesus, by the way, salvation is not as difficult as people think it is. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth Jesus Christ as Lord, Lord and Savior, and that God raised him from the dead, and we believe in our hearts, now we are saved. So if you confess with your mouth and you believe, my brother, you are saved. <laughs> you are saved. And nowadays that we, we don't go to church. <laughs> now you are saved there in your house. You are saved. Okay, I'm talking, I'm talking about the, the gifts of the the prophet, the give the office of the the prophet. And now, um, okay, I, I don't want to go into detail because my time is getting up. Don't build your ministry or revelation on revelation and supernatural manifestation. If you are a minister, you are following me now, and you are a pastor or you are, a, or are an evangelist. You are, I mean, you are a minister because because we have pastors who are prophets. Don't build your ministry on the revelation and supernatural manifestation because it comes a time when these gifts they get dried up. But I, 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 I do what I want to tell you. I want to educate you. Build on the word of God only. The miracles are there, but the Bible says that all things will come to pass, but the word will remain forever. These are the words of Jesus Himself. He said that all things will pass away, but the word will stand. The prophet has the responsibility to preach the word. Even if you are a prophet, don't depend on the prophecy. You need to preach the word. And individuals that try to build on gifts alone will fail in the ministry and eventually they'll get off. Just, you know that many, we have many, 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 many examples of people who came, they did miracles and now we cannot find them. In Africa, in East Africa I mean, I have two men that I can, that, 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 that I made uh, that, I, that, I do, uh, that I take as an example. We have Robert Kayanja from Uganda. This man from 80s, by the way, the ministry of Kayanja is the team that reached me in the year 1990 when I received Jesus. And we have in Kenya Bishop Lai. These are the people that we can 
I can give as an example. People who lay the foundation of the word, uh, who build their ministry in the foundation of the word. And I admire to that. Even though I'm saying I don't want to be like anyone, I want to be like Jesus. And also don't imitate anyone. Even don't imitate me. We all of us want to be like Jesus. But we must recognize the ministers who came, who fed us, who taught us before we became men of God. So our example is Jesus, but we have few men that we can say that they laid their ministry. And the world where they have Kenneth Hagin, he told Martin Branham, he told Copeland, he told them that when you are gone, I'll be still living even if I die. Because those one, Martin Branham, he was an evangelist who operated in science, wonders and miracles, and uh, Copeland had a very, very large crowd, but they did not lay foundation of the world. But Kenneth Hagin, many years back, he laid the foundation of the world. Even now, his ministry is stronger like today. Like, it be, like as if it is beginning just yesterday. So I'm encouraging men of God that they should not build the ministries on revelation and supernatural. Build the ministry in the word of God now. Uh-huh. I am saying again, not all who operate in the prophetic are operating in the Holy Spirit. Not all. This is a question. Not all who operate in the prophetic are operating by the Holy Spirit. Some of them, they have misambwa. <laughs> in Lord, we call them juogi. They have fami- I mean, familiar spirit. But, but because Christians nowadays, they don't want to read the word of God, they want to be prophesied to. It doesn't matter if they wear color. They, you see, they think it is now Holy Spirit. So, these are familiar spirits. They are not submitted to God, but to the devil. How to know the difference? Now, I am giving you how to know differences, but go to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Now, does the manifest... Now, if you want to know them, how this is how to know them. You cannot down and you are going to walk with your booklet on your hand. So whenever someone talks to you of prophecy, you will go to read. You, you are going to check. Because the Bible says we, we need to judge them. And you are going to judge them. Number one, does... Does the prophecy that this man or woman is bringing, does the manifestation bring the glory to Jesus? That is question number one. After the person prophesies, or after you see the prophet, you, you ask yourself this question and you answer yourself if yes or not. Number two, does it bring blessings to the people? And sometimes you might see as if they are bringing blessings to people and people are going to sin because nowadays I've heard people saying, hey, come, I pray for you, you go to America. Now, you see, some of them, they are going, you are going to get a white man to marry you. Now, that is not a blessing. That is just sin. So if I talk about blessing, you understand me. <laughs> yes, I need money, but I'll not sell. I'll not sell the gift that the Lord has put in me because of money. I must stand sometimes farm. I am in, a, in an area where people, they worship whites. So even, even if someone is in a church and she has a white husband, an old man or old woman, wife, we don't speak. But that's not a blessing. Does the prophecy bring blessing to the people? Real blessing? And it does. Number, number three, does it bring them nearer to God? Is the prophecy bringing them nearer to God or chasing them away? Or whoever that prophecy that you have had, even in television. Even now we have YouTubes and WhatsApp groups. And by the way, you will find me at Reverend Samuel Owino in the YouTube. Go there, you will find me there. And even this one, after I finish this, I drop it there. Because some of you are entering now and you are going to, to see it there um, for your own. You can go there, please. You can check YouTube, Reverend Samuel Owino. Please go there, you can like it. You can even subscribe. You can even do what? You can even share into your wall. Feel free to share. Because I want the message to reach people, not the issue of making money. We want this message to reach people. Now, does this bring people nearer to God or chasing people? Number four, does it exalt man? Because we have some prophets that they prophesy that they may be known as men of God. Now, as I'm preaching here, maybe I, I drum up my, 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 my I, I, I beat drum for myself that people may know that I am now evangel- uh, Facebook evangelist or televangelist. Does the prophet, the prophecy, does it exalt man or exalt attention of man? Because that one also, people, they want to be known. They want to be recognized. They want to draw attention of the people. So they prophesy to them what they want. So that is how to know. 
the false and true prophet. Okay, now that was a recap, but a very long recap, <laughs> very very long. Let us go to the evangelist. I'm afraid I'm using this. This is the mighty hand of God. We have an apostle. Is the one that the thump one because he goes to where the virgin land. If I say virgin land, is where the gospel has not reached. Not congesting in towns. No, 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 no. Some people they come to big towns and they they call themselves apostles, but taking from the, the small churches. They take members from small churches and they call themselves apostles because they've come down. Now this man, apostle, true apostle, goes to the virgin virgin places. If I say virgin land, I mean the unreached areas. Number two, we have a prophet, and we have number three, an evangelist. And we have this man with a ring, a pastor, because he's lovely. You remember when Jesus said that there was an owner of the land who wanted to cut a tree. And the, and the farmer said that, please, boss, let me cultivate this tree for this year. I'll water it and uh, do some whatever. Then next year come. If you find it without a fruit, then you can cut it out. That is the pastor. Because they don't chase people to churches, from churches, no? They... How do, do I put it? They, they, they bear with the people. You can see someone in the church, he's doing sin. When evangelist sees that, he says, that man should be chased from the church. But a pastor has an out of love. And we have a teacher that what I'm doing now is teaching. That is, this is the small finger that we use to take out some dust from, the, from our, our ears. And nowadays we are, we, 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 are, we, we are advised not to do so because maybe they are, but okay, I have faith. I have. So this, this, this small finger is not small. And I told you that even though an apostle was mentioned first in the New Testament, it does not mean that apostle is greater than all. No, no, no. And because this one is the smallest one, it doesn't mean that, that, this, that, uh, uh, that the teacher's ministry is the smallest one. No. Now, let us go to the evangelist, the long one. And I told you this long one means that he goes to reach others and to bring back. You see? Go, Jesus told Peter about that from today, you are going to be a fisher of... Men, follow me, and I'll make you fisher of men. It's going long finger. Remember a thumb is a oh, apostle. Remember this one, the mouthpiece of God. He warns or she warns. And now we are to this long man. He goes and brings. He's a fisherman. He goes out. Now, now evangelist defined. Take notebook now. <laughs> Here we are. Just about 15 minutes, I'm going to talk about evangelist. Evangelist only occurs three times in the New Testament. An evangelist only occurs three times in the New Testament in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11, and in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 21 and verses 8, and 2 Timothy Chapter four, verse five. Those are the 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 the, 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 the three times the three times that evangelism occurs in the New Testament. Now, one who brings the evangel. The word evangel means good news. Evangel means this is a Greek language. Brings uh, a, a evangel. Uh, one who brings the evangel, good news or a message of good tidings. So. <laughs> when I was a young minister, I used to think that evangelist is the man when he stands, this man is very harsh. Come to Jesus. Uh, no. <laughs> Some days I was taught, and I was told that you are wrong. Evangel means to bring good news. Now, an evangelist is someone that brings good news or a message of good tidings, even as now, where I have. But sorry, you will forgive me. This. This, this um, minister for uh, health, whenever he comes in the screen, he comes to threaten. I, even if people are against Magufuli, but still, I admire the leadership of Magufuli. He said that now it is a time even the, the, the health minister, he should bring message that encourages people. Not realize that now we prepare for worst thing to come, all time, worst thing to come. No, 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 that is not. Now, heart of evangelist is someone that brings good news to people. We know there is hellfire, but we are not to threat people with the hell. But we are not supposed to threaten people, even the government. I st that, that is my stand. This is not a whip that we should be threatening. Even yesterday, Bagufuli said that we should not put corona like what that like a death sentence now an evangelist is someone that brings the message of hope 
a good tidings to the people. A good news. Evangel means good news. The evangelist emphasis is good. Uh, the evangelist emphasis is the good news of the gospel. The gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ. Not all good news are gospel. <laughs> Remember that also. <laughs> Evangel is a good news. But gospel is a good news of Jesus Christ that he came to the earth. But remember I told you, Jesus did not come to die. <laughs> he came to seek and also to save. Now by seeking, he came and he walked and he preached to the people, the work of evangelist. After preaching to them, he died on the cross for them. Then on third day he rose. So if you want to preach the gospel only of death alone, now your gospel is incomplete. Also, if you want to, want to preach the gospel of suffering alone, now also that one is incomplete. And if you want to, to preach the resurrection gospel alone, it is also incomplete. Your gospel must include the life of Jesus, the suffering, the death, and the resurrection. Now, that is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, uh -huh. the evangelists, uh, okay, the core. The core of their ministry bringing people in, is bringing people into the kingdom. The core of the ministry of, evangel of evangelists is bringing people into the kingdom. Now, if you threaten people, they will not come to the kingdom by threatening. Even though some, okay, there are some times, I told you that evangelists and the prophets, sometimes they work together. They are also neighbor, according to the fingers. Sometimes the word of God may come very harshly, but it, repair, it, it, it ends with what? With a solution. Repent and come to the Lord because the Lord loves us. Even as we are suffering now, the Lord still loves us. So we need to show them danger. But after showing the people danger, now we show them the hope. You see? Now, I say whatever we do as evangelists now, you need to do things that bring the people to, to Christ. And... Uh, I say the core, the core of their ministry is bringing people into the kingdom by declaring the goodness of God. In whatever we do, we should declare the goodness of God and revealing the depravity of a man and the sin nature. The man failure, the fall of man, and the sinful nature. And also, it should be talking about sin, grace, redemption, and salvation. Not always sin, sin, sin. One day I went to preach to the church. And I was told to go there preaching after every for, for three weeks. I preached okay for one month. I was the, I was taking when I was still a young preacher, and I was still not a full pastor. I was a associate pastor, a pastor, and I used to be sent to to the churches that uh, maybe pastor had traveled or so. And went to that this church one first Sunday. I preached to them. They were encouraged. The following Sunday they bring their neighbors. The third Sunday they bring. I saw people coming to church many. And when I was telling them now, bye, I'll be going to my to the headquarters. And the following week their pastor would come. They told us, oh pastor, how we wish you become to be our pastor, because our pastor every Sunday he calls us the 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 the, the, the what the, the the vipers of the serpent. Kizazi <laughs> Chanyoka. You see? So this pastor, when he used to come to church, he used to see all people as sinners. No hope. But now I say that us and, and we thought that, that that was the heart of an evangelist. Always t telling people about their sins. Always telling people. But today I was challenged. And after I was challenged, I, I tell you, even my ministry has come to a change. Surely in my church nowadays, I have more than 100 people. But for many years, I was having five 10 people, 20 people. Because whenever I come, I thought that evangelist is always, always telling God to repent. You are sinners. But now we need to have what? As an evangelist, as an evangelist, a true evangelist. And I said, he has a message to, tell, to show people their sin and let them know there is what we call grace and redemption. And this will lead them to what? To salvation. So that is the heart of an evangelist. They only... The only New Testament example we have of the, um, of the office of the evangelist is Philip. Philip, in the book of, you are going to read, you have your Bible in your house, you are following me, you are, and if you don't have a Bible now, you cannot somewhere, because you are going to read later. Now, we, in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 8, verses 5, and also verses 35. The only place that is mentioned evangelist and the apostle who was called an evangelist is Paul. In fact, 
uh, Philip is not addressed <laughs> as an apostle. He is addressed as Philip the evangelist. You remember how he did. He, he preached, he evangelized to that Ethiopian eunuch. When he saw that Ethiopian eunuch, welcome Richard Ochilo, may God bless you, Anyanzwa. Why, you are lost, brother. Many, many days I've not seen you. Um, when Philip saw that eunuch in the cart, he was walking, and the eunuch was reading a scroll. And Philip came closer, and they, this man was reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. And when he was, uh, thank you, great pastor, thank you, thank you, thank you. And when he was reading, so Philip came and asked the man, do you understand what you are reading? And now the man told him, how can I understand without someone telling me? How can I know without being told? Without someone uh, uh, reveal, uh, uh, preaching to me, how? And now Philip tried to preach to that man. And when they reached near water, and because they talked about water, water baptism, the man told uh, Philip, Philip the evangelist, remember that, here are the waters. What? Why, why don't you baptize me? And Philip baptized the Ethiopian eunuch, and then he disappeared. Like Elijah. But he... he Philip did not go to heaven. He disappeared and he was seen in another town preaching the good news. So he is in the New Testament addressed as Philip the Evangelist. Philip the Evangelist in Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 verses 5 and also verses 35. Now Philip had one message, Jesus Christ. That was the message of Philip. And the main recurring theme of the Evangelist, Jesus Christ and him crucified. This was the message of, uh, of Philip. The main recurring theme of the evangelist is Jesus and him crucified. Him crucified. And we all have the responsibility of preaching Jesus. Even though I am not evangelist, even though you might be operating as apostle, even though you might be operating as a prophet, still we have the mandate of preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. Remember Apostle Paul, he was saying that I did not come to you with eloquences, <laughs> but I came to you with Jesus and Jesus alone, him crucified. And not only crucified, he died. <laughs> I tell you that if Jesus was crucified and he did not die, he was just like other people. If he was crucified and he died and not resurrected, it was just as a normal because people were crucified. And, and also if he died and resurrected without being persecuted, remember that man whom, whom was thrown in the, in the bones of Elisha. And that man also he rose from the dead. So the, the only cause of, this salvation, of salvation is suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And that is the call of the evangelist. Now, the evangelist's main goal is to see souls won to the kingdom. The